Are you getting deeper into your relationship with your partner and wondering why you're no longer experiencing the same passion and excitement for them as you did in the beginning? In this video, you'll discover why your relationship may be feeling boring and lifeless and exactly what to do about it. Hi, it's Gabrielle, and for over 12 years, I've been a licensed professional counselor and relationship expert in private practice in Boulder, Colorado. And my practice is grounded in the science of what makes relationships work. Today, you're going to understand exactly what's going on in your brain that accounts for why your feelings change as you and your partner get to know each other better. I'm going to give you a couple of specific steps you can take today to stay excited about each other for the long haul. Okay, you're old enough to have had a few intimate relationships and you may have noticed a pattern. You start out super excited about and attracted to your new partner, but as you move into deeper stages of commitment, your feelings for each other start to wane. 10 years later, you're going out to dinner with your partner and you're way more interested in what's going on with your phone than what's happening with your partner. Maybe you settle into a comfortable platonic relationship, but you're just not hot for each other anymore. Or maybe you lose interest altogether and can't seem to stay in a relationship longer than a few months. Maybe you've been married for 30 years and long for the time when you and your partner were deeply infatuated with each other and couldn't wait to be together at the end of the day. Maybe you long for the time as when Sting said, every little thing she does is magic and not every little thing she does is so annoying. You may be wondering, is there something wrong with my partner? Is there something wrong with me? Or do all relationships just peter out in the long run? Where did the spark go? The truth is that there's nothing wrong with you or your partner. The fact that your feelings change over time can be explained both neurologically and relationally. Let's take a look at some brain science to see what can account for these changes. Here's the headline news you need to know. Adult intimate relationships are an expression of human bonding. And these relationships go through a predictable series of stages. We call the first stage the falling in love stage. In this stage, your brain is literally on drugs, producing all sorts of neurotransmitters that make you feel all of the special emotions that we associate with being in love. Your brain is flooded with dopamine and other excitatory brain chemicals like vasopressin and noradrenaline. You're on a natural love drug brain bender. These neurotransmitters are what make you feel hot, amorous, and over the moon. At the same time, your brain in the early stages of love is low on serotonin, a calming hormone. That's why every moment you spend away from your beloved is agonizing as you obsess about your newfound love. You may even feel panicked about the next time you'll see them. From an evolutionary perspective, these intense, all-consuming feelings are Mother Nature's way of ensuring that you get together with that other person and procreate. But there are disadvantages to being so overcome with emotion. These feelings make it impossible to get a realistic impression of the person you're falling in love with. Now again, from an evolutionary perspective, Overlooking any potential flaws increases the chances that you're going to reproduce. Up to 10,000 years ago, people only lived to be between 17 and 34 years old. We had a very short lifespan. If our species was going to survive, we couldn't wait around and see if we were right for each other, much less soulmates. Sex needed to happen quickly, but these warm, gushing, obsessive feelings were never meant to last forever. Living in the can't sleep, can't eat state just wouldn't be sustainable. The falling in love stage usually lasts for the first six months to two years of a new relationship. If all goes well and it's what you both want, then at a certain point you both commit to making the relationship permanent. This signals the beginning of the second stage, which I call the commitment stage. The hallmark of the commitment stage is that your brain now views your partner as permanent in your life. That sense of permanence can arise as a result of various different milestones in the relationship, depending on the person. Your brain may start to see your partner as permanent once you decide to only date each other. Maybe it's deciding to get married, or maybe it's the birth of your first child that brings that sense of permanence. Whatever signals commitment and permanence in your brain, it's during this commitment stage that important neurobiological changes start happening. 
that intense brain cocktail of dopamine, vasopressin, and noradrenaline you experienced in the falling in love stage starts to wane. The result is that you begin to see your partner more accurately, warts and all. You start to see their flaws, what you don't like so much about them. Often this change in brain chemistry corresponds to you and your partner having your first serious fight. This is often a make it or break it moment for the couple. How you fight, whether you're able to maintain an attitude of friendliness and protect each other and your relationship from destructive impulses may make all the difference between whether you decide to move forward with the relationship or call it quits. If your relationship survives stage two, you and your partner move into stage three, which I call the permanent stage. You have now solidified the basic pattern through which the two of you are going to relate, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This pattern could be emotionally secure or insecure, but it will replicate your early experiences in relationship with your parents. The sense of stability and permanence can go one of two ways. One possibility is that you create a pattern of safety and security for your relationship in stage two, in which you have a solid emotional foundation from which to build your lives together. But if you manage to get to the permanent stage, treating each other unkindly, lacking a deep understanding of and care for one another, then you may be together, but your relationship is going to have trust issues, and a lack of safety. There can be a lot of emotional conflict, but it's ironically stable in its instability. Here's where the permanency of the third stage can create dullness and boredom in relationships and a slowly rotting dissatisfaction. But here's the secret to counteracting this problem. Neuroscientist Dr. Norman Deutsch says that the brain loves novelty. In the beginning of your relationship when you're dating, your partner is fresh and exciting because they're new to you. Maintaining that freshness that you experience in the dating phase is going to require that you and your partner consciously do things together that keep the freshness alive. Here are a couple of steps you can take to get out of the rut and bring some of the magic and discovery back that you had in the beginning. Tip number one, juice it up. Praise compliment and celebrate your partner daily. Your brain actually has a negativity bias. That means that the deeper part of your brain is wired through hundreds of thousands of years of evolution to be constantly looking out for things that could kill you like wild animals. Unfortunately, that part of your brain is the same part that gets triggered when you feel emotionally threatened by your partner. What a lot of couples don't realize is that it's not enough to just stop fighting with your partner. The two of you have to take active steps to make each other feel wonderful every day. This is the only way to counteract the negativity bias we all have. Expressing gratitude, regard, and affection for each other daily is one of the best ways to do this. But it also means that you need to understand the specific things that your partner needs to hear, your particular partner, that make them feel precious to you. Maybe it's how smart they are or how beautiful they are. Maybe it's how hard they work to support the family. Gratitude, even for the small things that many couples do not think to thank each other for, such as cleaning the kitchen, driving the kids to school, and so forth, is a hallmark of satisfying, enduring, intimate relationships. Tip number two, take time every day to gaze silently into each other's eyes. All of us are bombarded by stimuli every day. We need to make sure that we have enough mental resources to focus on the things that are unknown to us and that actually require our attention in order for us to master them. Our brains have to make choices about what to focus on. And all of these choices are actually going on outside of our conscious awareness. So our brains need to upload a lot of our experience to automatic memory in order to free up mental resources. Unfortunately, our brains also automate our partners. And when you do that, you start relating to your partner through your memories of them 
rather than relating to them in real time. Here's the deep dark truth of how our brains work. Partners are running on automatic with each other almost all the time. That's why taking time every day to sit very close together and gaze silently into each other's eyes is a fantastic way for couples to rejuvenate their love. The only way to stay in the moment is to look into each other's eyes. If you don't do this, all you have to relate to are your negative memories of your partner. Because if you've had a lot of negative experiences of your relationship, that's what you're relating to when you don't look at them. Now, some people have a lot of discomfort with eye gazing. If this is you or your partner, it's important that you share these feelings with each other and explore where they might be coming from. Many people have had negative experiences with eye contact when they were children. A parent might have stared at you with a shaming expression, or maybe no parent ever gazed lovingly into your eyes at all. Whatever it is, it's important that you share these feelings, these thoughts and experiences with your partner so the two of you can create new experiences of positive connection with one another. Remember, love is a verb. Take active steps to create loving energy between you every day. Stay connected through quiet eye gazing and tell each other things that make each other feel totally loved and totally accepted. These are actions that only need to take a few moments, a few times a day. You don't have to change your whole lifestyle, but they can have such a transformative effect on your long-term relationship health and help you both keep the spark alive. You create a reason to stay in the relationship long past the initial feelings of passion have since waned. When you begin to pay attention to and value your partner, you train yourself to look and really see them with fresh eyes. You become partners who share in a continual process of discovering each other, and you become intriguing to each other again and again. This can be an enduring source of delight and freshness in your relationship. So now let's hear from you. What action steps could you take today to improve the energy between you and your partner and keep the spark alive? How could you shift your attention and start noticing them more? Is it through sitting together and gazing more quietly into each other's eyes, expressing appreciation and celebrating each other? If so, what would they like to be appreciated for? Leave me your comments below. I look forward to reading them and seeing you in the next video. And if you enjoyed what you learned today, please give this video a like and share it. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button right here and that will allow me to continue to bring you quality videos just like this one. And please go to thepowercoupleformula.com for lots more information about how to build an amazing relationship and powercouplseducation.com to stay connected.